Hi everyone and welcome to part two of Peter Fisk's private chat for Inside Leather History of Fireside Chat. It's now Saturday afternoon, March 18th, uh, 2017, and we're at his home in Palm Springs, California. This is Peter's famous, or infamous, infamous, infamous whip room, his whip collection. Peter's going to tell us a little bit about this. We'll walk through a little bit. Um, Peter, I have to say it's, an, it's incredible. Not only do you have an, an, un, an indescribable collection of whips, but look, you've got these belts, you've got all these other items and here artwork, are, yeah. artwork on the walls. It's, it, it's, it's breathtaking. Um, and have you noticed the smell? I do. It is incredible. It's too bad this isn't in smell of vision. <laughs> <laughs> I notice um, Von, right behind Von Tremel, who's filming this, I, I'd like to take, I'd like to start off with a very unique item you have here on this uh, shelf. And as soon as we can get that in uh, frame, you've got an amazing um, cage mask. Yes. Let's, may, may we hear the story behind that? Uh, I bought that, uh, actually, no, I didn't buy it. It was given to me by Paul Click. And Paul was a sheriff's deputy in San Francisco and was very into heavy metal. And so I inherited the uh, scold or bridle, scold cage or bridle from him. He loved to wear it. Uh, and also very heavy uh, shackles, which I'll show you in a bit. Okay. And also full, a full set, including uh, not just the four points, hands and feet, but also including heavy neck. Uh, okay. And two different uh, very heavy German uh, uh, shackles that weigh eight to 10 pounds each. My but Paul gosh. was a big man and a sheriff's uh, sergeant and a uh, member of Hellfire the 15. Uh, and I took care of him when he was sick and was with him when he, when he died. Wow. And all of that wow. stuff had to be out of the dungeon before mother and two sisters arrived from Sioux City, Iowa. <laughs> I'm glad but you were able to save this stuff. While we're here, I'll show you now the oldest whip in the collection. Okay. And, Vaughn, if you can get in and photograph that. It is from Dothan, Alabama, between 1820 and 1840. Incredible. And it's for disciplining house servants. It doesn't leave any marks. It's very... Feel it, Doug. It's real heavy rawhide, and you can Incredible. see the uh, uh, the metal work is is hand wrought. It's not. How did you? It's done by a uh, uh, you know a metal. Uh, I I inherited this in trade from a guy who was not into yeah. SM, but was into gay porn, and I gave him a rather good collection of gay porn. Uh, in exchange for this whip. And he told me the family history was that he's, he knows for sure it was in the family by 1840. And it stayed there until I got it from him in the 19, early 1970s. Incredible. So I've had it since then. It's and priceless. I, I, I'm trying to put good energy on it. So I've used it on a lot of people. It's still usable. It's 175 years old. And it's still usable. So. How did you come to acquire so many whips? I mean, the the room is literally full. How did you acquire all well, of Well, it just grows on you. And uh, I am considered enough of an expert that I've been on television uh, uh, identifying help creating a history or provenance uh, for a 19th century whip. The program was called Deals from the Dark Side. And I helped appraise and create a provenance and history for a 19th century cat and nine tail whip. Incredible. Which they had been told was uh, English, but it turned out it was Australian. And it was not from the penal settlements, it was from Australian prisons where they continued to whip people until uh, uh, even into the 20th century. Incredible. And uh, it had, they examined it and there was blood on it. But it had belonged to a pro dom for 20 years, and Incredible. I'll bet it was some of the men she played with. Uh, and 
So, uh, I have become an expert. I can tell you where a whip is from. I can tell you the age of it pretty well. And uh, that's a good bit of information. So, for example, if I were to, at random, select one of these items that you have. Well, these are all single tails uh, and quartz. Uh, and some of them, uh, there's a nice long one. Uh, and I'll take it out for you uh, because this one has history. This one puts some marks on my back. Uh -huh. uh, and that's a signal whip, but it's a it's a very long, uh, cracking uh, single tail whip. And there's another one right here that's about five feet long. Wow! That will make a back into hamburger. And you need to have some accuracy in throwing these single tail whips. And then there are a bunch of cowboy quartz here. Uh, this one I just got this week. Cowboys always had a quirt, usually under their arm, and they could smack you over the head with the with the oh, weighted with this end. Okay. end, or for beating the wife, the horse, or the boyfriend, was this end. This one is probably, it's I think it's from Colorado or New Mexico, and it's about 1910. My gosh. And still quite usable. How incredible. Yeah. Now, how do you tell the age? When, when you're appraising uh, a whip, how, how are you? The patina, the wear patterns. You can tell whether it's been used a lot or a little. This one's been used a lot. Yeah. It has a lot of wear. I can tell if there's a replacement. They call these poppers. If there's replacement poppers, I can tell. Uh, you can tell if a new a whip is, is, is old versus new. This one I got a couple of weeks ago. Uh, and it's a rawhide whip. I don't think it's ever been used. It has no wear. Yeah, it doesn't feel... It feels totally different from the others. Yeah, I'd say it's modern. Yeah. Uh, but it's nicely made. Uh, and I always use them on myself first. What is... Before any of my whips hit any human, they hit me so I know what they feel like. Behind you here, there's an interesting piece. What's this one? The, this is what they call a rebente. Uh, yes, there we are. We got it. It is from Argentina, and this is all silver. Uh, the silver beads, all this is silver, and you get hit with the strap side. Okay. These are these are quite uh, wonderful. This one is probably 1920s. Now, for uh, for preservation purposes. Do you have to treat this leather? Do you have to? Oh, do I have lots specific? of leather grease. Okay. Uh, I use what's called Picards. Okay. Uh, uh, P E C A R D, like but like Captain Picard. Uh, Star and Trek, yes. yeah, and their leather grease. <coughs> I go through a tub of it this big every six months. Now. And it's a job. I I have to have help sometimes just cleaning these whips. And in this hot climate in the summer, they can't be allowed to dry out. How many, can you give us an estimate? How many whips do I you know have? I have more than a thousand, but I don't know how many more. I've never counted. Incredible. And uh, uh, there are various kinds. Uh, I'll show you a few of the kinds. This is Argentine, we know that. Yes. Uh, there are some over here. This one. You probably would never guess, but it is from Mongolia. No kidding. It is a Mongolian whip, and it has a it has a friend. There's a smaller one. That's a horse whip from Mongolia. This is a dog whip from Mongolia, and probably about 1900. And then, uh, well. Here's another Mongolian whip. I have three. This is the third one. And where have you, how have you acquired these? Uh, believe it or not, these three on eBay. Incredible. And 
Then we have, uh, this whip is dual purpose, and it is from Turkmenistan. Wow. And if you, uh, where are we? Incredible. It has a great blade on it. Incredible. And fits in, and there's a little... There's a little hook here that you press down that locks it. Okay. I didn't lock it actually. Well, we'll we'll leave that for the moment. Uh, and then uh, we have these items are from Scotland. They're called tawsers. And they're for uh, beating children. Oh my! On the hands. And incredible. They're they're quite severe. And I have probably fifty of those. And incredible. They are so much fun to play with. Now they're for spanking, really. <coughs> you don't want to hit someone on the back. And then, well, these are shambots. This one is from North Africa, from Egypt. And it's got, actually, it, it, it may not be North Africa, it might be South Africa. Because it's got a Zulu metal work. Incredible. But I got it in the Cairo uh, uh, market. So I assumed it was North African. See the metal work? It's really nicely done. It's over five feet long. Wow. Uh, and it is, in, shambok in, in Afrikaans means whip. And this is the kind of whips that they used. Incredible. And they're really quite severe uh, and fun to use. Now, have you actually actively used every one of these whips? Just about. Incredible. Uh, I don't have broken whips that can't be used. All of them can be used. And the belt collection, which is very interesting, I'm into cops. I freely admit that. My partner uh, of many years, play partner and, and friend, uh, Rick, uh, uh, Dick uh, Carlson, uh, was a San Francisco police officer for 20 years, okay. and even now works one day a week as a uh, uh, as a special officer in San Francisco. And uh, so I got into I, uh, the belts are very interesting, and I use them for play. They <laughs> they do get used for play. There's lots of boys who come over here and they want to be beaten with with belts. So that's the reason for the belt collection. Okay. And. Uh, uh, boots. <clears throat> Lots of guys like boots. I have people who come over and shine my boots sometimes. And uh, let me show you, by the way, we talked about Paul, about the heavy metal. Yes. <clears throat> oh my God. There's Incredible. The Incredible. The hands weigh about eight pounds and each, and the feet weigh about twelve. Wow. Each. And I don't usually travel with them anymore because... They're so heavy. They're so heavy. They take up so much space, you know. And more belts. Then there's the light shadows. These came from Paul, too. And you see, there's a neck. Yes. There's hands. And there's feet. It's five point. Wow. Uh, and I've got a whole ring of keys for all this stuff. Wow. And it's so much fun to play with heavy metal. And and the bridle. A lot of fun. But we should show some of the artwork in here, too. Yes, yes. For instance, over here in this corner... That is by a man named Leslie Hurry, 
who was a designer for stage, opera, and movies in London. And this is kind of what Leslie got up to in his private time. And there's a vaulting horse where whippings would be done and fuckings. <laughs> and Leslie, I think, is the is the bottom. And it's his ideal man in a rubber police raincoat. Wow. And with a whip and there's dildos and Leslie came up with some pretty fun stuff. <laughs> Afghanistan was a monarchy until 1960s. And this is all hand wrought silver and carnelian and turquoise, carnelian there, turquoise in here. And all hand wrought about 19, <coughs> excuse me, about 1920, 1930, uh, and belonged to a prince and probably should be in a museum. And how did you acquire this item? I got it in San Francisco from an Afghan who fled when the Russians came in in 1980. And I bought it from him in 1985, and it cost $1,200 then. Incredible. Which was a lot of money. And that was a pretty good deal, actually. Wow. Uh, and I've seen some in Wibbs. There's one in the Metropolitan, very like this one. And then, uh, let's see, well, this is a fun whip, because this is another one from Argentina. And it's dated. 1920. Wow, look at that. And the initials. Incredible. And they, they call this rebenke, which means quirt. And, but let's do some more artwork. <laughs> so up here, uh, there's a nice one of Coulter after he won IML. He'd just been given his, he didn't get a sash, he got flowers. Oh. Leather roses. Uh, and uh, there's a wonderful, uh, this belonged to an IML contestant, uh, Jason. And I got it from his uh, sale after he passed away here in Palm Springs. And then there's a wonderful one there of Coulter, uh, done by Taurus, uh, in his harness. Uh, and it kind of pops out at you. It's those big eyes of his. He used little jewels, and they, they, they really come out. Tell me about this this small picture right here. That's in Old Sydney. It's a flogging convict flogging in Old Sydney, which they do every day at, at one o'clock. <laughs> oh, seriously. And the little piece next to it uh, was made by Chuck Arnett. Uh, and given by Chuck to Alan Selby. And Alan Selby left it to me. This guy here, I've met him once. He's a hustler in Los Angeles. Hmm. Uh, he's a little older now. This was 40 years ago, so he's now in about 60-something. Wow. 60-ish. And here's my friend. This is fun. Here's my friend Rick. Uh, doing his Batman thing, uh, and he used to, he would take a 10-foot whip and uh, crack it around this woman's neck uh, and pull her with it. And it was very, you know, uh, very intimidating and also very fun for everybody who was there. And then I've got porn in the house. Uh, lots of porn, DVDs nowadays, and uh, this is the Emperor Hadrian and his boyfriend Antinous. Uh, and here's another. There's another cutout there, another Tom man, and this gentleman. The real picture is is there, and then his picture. Yeah. Picture. Yeah. And I never met him, but I liked the picture, and I liked that it had another picture attached to it. And he is a gay man. And uh, then here, we got Coulter and uh, number two and number three at IML 83. Wow. Uh, and that's quite a wonderful picture. Absolutely. And uh, uh, 
just on this rack alone, I think there's a couple of hundred whips. There's another maybe 300 in here. The shelves are groaning. I don't know what I'm going to do. Uh, even these drawers are full. Incredible. Look at that. Uh, and some of these will go to the archives and museum. Uh, I would love it if there'd be a case, a, a display case, uh, with my name on it and maybe a small picture, you know, Peter Fisk Whip Collection. And I, I've arranged that they will get 50 to 60 of my whips, including some that are very valuable. What about to, the rest of them, though? The rest of them, are there's uh, some friends are going to get, and the rest will be sold so people can enjoy them. I see. Okay. Would you like to see my oldest whip? Absolutely. Uh, or my most valuable, not oldest. You saw the oldest. The most valuable are here. And I don't show these very often. And they're going to the archives and museum when I'm gone. But we'll pull them out. And you will go, ooh. Because, one more, uh, these are all rhino horn Whoa. from the 19th century, every single one. Uh, and they're very valuable uh, in the range of uh, between five and ten thousand dollars each. Shit. And this is my other oldest whip. This whip, which comes from uh, Prince George's County, Maryland, actually Charles County, and my family uh, had a home there, my mother's adopted family. And there's a little piece, there's a tobacco leaf on the whip. It's a lady's riding wow. whip from about 1820 to 1840. Incredible. In, in ivory. And still usable. Uh, I use it on, uh, I use it on nipples and, and, <laughs> uh, and uh, CB torture and it's really quite nice. Now, how did you acquire these pieces? Uh, the rhino horn ones I got in England. Oh, oh we lost one. Which, oh, from here. Uh, no, it's not. That's not the one. One of these is without its. We'll we'll pick, put that together. Okay. Later. But these are. Uh, I got them all in London, in the in the nineteen sixties uh, and seventies, late sixties and seventies, and at that time, they were. Well mostly around 100 pounds, which was a lot of money. In those days, yes. Uh, 100 pounds was about 180 to $200. And you can imagine $200 in 1968, 70 was a lot of money. Absolutely. But I came across them and couldn't resist. And I've had them all these years. And LA&M will be able to sell them. This one, there's a, uh, there's a fox and he's got little ruby eyes. Incredible. I don't know if you can see that, Bonham, but the fox has ruby oh, eyes. I guess I should be like focusing on it instead of looking at it. See the eyes? They're, they're ruby. And that's all hand work. And the rhino Actually, horn... Let me, let me, no, 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 take a hand out. I'm using your shirt as a... Oh, okay. And the rhino horn has been made to look like a, like a wooden uh, riding crop, but it's rhino horn. Incredible. Do me a favor, can you spin that really, really slow at about that angle? I might use this as like one of the openers. Go ahead and spin it. Keep spinning it. I'm trying to get different angles. It's incredible work. It's so about uh, 1890 to 1900. Incredible. And rhino horn, if it's over 100 <laughs> years old, uh, archives and museum will have less trouble because they're non-profit. 
Yes. And it's the legacy I'm leaving them. But they will have to have approval from uh, uh, endangered species uh, people at the Department of Agriculture. Uh, and and it, they have to be antiques. And we c it can't be sold in California, so it'll have to be in New York. And probably one of the big auction houses, uh, like Sotheby's or... Wow. Uh, or wow. uh, and they do sometimes deal in rhino uh, horn wow. items. And then, legally, you can't take them out of the United States. They can't go from one country to another. Uh, and if you do it illegally and they catch you, you'll go to prison. Wow. But uh, Chinese uh, dealers are buying up rhino horn and then they crush it up and sell it as, as medicine. Right. It's too bad if these wonderful whips. I really don't want them crushed up. Mm -hmm. uh, they're fantastic. Uh, uh, this is another nice one. This has got a little carnelian stone in it. And that's from uh, that's from Turkmenistan, or or uh, or Turkey. And then this one, little little colored stones. Wow! Look at that. Uh, about 1890. It's incredibly intricate. And yet I still use them. Wow. They get to come out and play, you know. You got to take your whips for a walk, you know. <laughs> I go to the park here in Palm Springs with Drew Kramer, and we do whips in the park, uh, and it's fun. I'm trying to get the light. Oh, I see. I don't know Black what background. Doing. I'm using you for your shirt. Okay. Uh, the the colors coming out really nice on them. Yeah. yeah, the intricacy is is breathtaking, truly. And I'm still buying stuff, you know. Nowadays, I use the virtual market instead of the antiques market. No more Portobello Road, no more Marin City Flea Market, now, no more Alameda, but I buy on eBay now. What is the most difficultly, difficultly acquired whip that you have? Uh, probably it's, it's very almost impossible now to find Chambox. another one that's really nice. Wow, look and at This that. one is from North Africa, from <clears> Egypt. <throat> Incredible. Uh, but you can't find them anymore. Uh, and uh, there's one of them I have, I might pull it out for you, that's, that's Black Rhino. And Black Rhino is endangered. Uh, Black Rhino is down to, uh, let's see if I can find it. Uh, finding anything. Oh, I think I did. <laughs> Well, there's, there's, there's one. There's another one here, uh, and I will continue to, to look for it because it's it's fascinating to see. Yeah, here it is. Both of these actually are black rhino. Wow! Look at that. Uh, and black rhino is down to fifteen hundred animals in the world. Oh my God! It's more than endangered. It's super endangered. Yeah. But these are these animals died. This one I bought in Scotland, in Edinburgh. And the man I bought it from, it was his father's, and his father was in the Boer War from wow. 1899 to 1902, oh and brought gosh. it back from South Africa. Incredible. And when I saw the man in about 1974 seven, the, the uh, son, he was in his 80s then, and he had it uh, uh, on the shelf in his, in his uh, uh, display cabinet in the shop, and I said, is the whip for sale? And he said, oh, I cannot sell it. When the, when the tough boys come on, I smack it down on the counter and they run. <laughs> he said, it was my dad's, wow. but I finally got him wow. to sell it. Uh, he, we didn't even dicker because I said, I'll give you 40 pounds, which was a lot of money. Yeah. And, and he said, done. Take it home and enjoy it. Incredible. And uh, that's Black Rhino, and this one is too. This one was a missionary's in, uh, 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 not South Africa, but 
uh, Zimbabwe, I think. Okay. And family brought it back, and it's a it's been cut into two thongs. Yeah. But it's black rhino, no doubt about it. Uh, wow. It's very sometimes hard to tell the difference between rhino and elephant. Okay. Uh, I have hippo whips, I have elephant whips, I have rhino whips. They're all antique, so they're perfectly fine. Uh, you have to be very careful. I don't want to run afoul of any government agency. So, uh, And I haven't found one in a very long time anymore. They're just not out there, kind of right. like the rhino horn. Right. You won't find a rhino horn whip <clears throat> anywhere now. Now, for how many years have you been acquiring these? I started the whip collection <clears throat> when I moved to San Francisco in 1966. Okay. Okay. And by 1976, 10 years later, living south of Market, I had 80 whips. Wow. And a man broke into the house, I think a man, probably one of our tricks, because there were three of us in there, broke into our uh, flat on Washburn Street and stole my 80 whips. Oh. And this gives you a, a little, insight into the kind of person I am. I cried for three days and then I said, I'm not gonna let this stop me. I'll get more whips. Wow. And within a year I had 140. Incredible. I just started finding them. And occasionally I deaccess some of them just like a museum. Uh, I did that a year ago. Uh, and people are happy to get them because they're special and uh, uh, I can tell them where they come from and, you know, uh, a little bit of their history. And they have, they have, uh, they have a personality. They're, they're almost like people. <laughs> so no. Mama has over a thousand children. My children are these whips. <laughs> when you left San Francisco to move here to Palm Springs, how did you transport all of these? Are not easily in boxes, very heavy boxes, and we did it ourselves. And uh, there is a little bit of a problem. You can see from display over here, <laughs> that's ready to crash down. I really need to get some whips off of there. Uh, but they're really extraordinary, you know. Uh, this one here is a Plains Indian uh, quirt. Wow from about uh, 1900. Wow. And uh, nice carved, real carved uh, elk horn. Yeah. And the, the studding, which they really liked. And I don't know what the holes are. I've been told different stories. Some say they're for counting coup, but by the time this was made, they really weren't counting coup anymore. Uh, some have said it actually could be used as a sort of a cribbage board. Hmm. I, I don't know. I have no idea. But it's nicely carved. And I just love the workmanship on these. You know, uh, this one is from Argentina and it's... Wow. Uh, it's horn. How intricate. Yeah, it's a horn handle. So I'm sort of the custodian of all these, you know. I take care of them, I use them, and then they'll get passed on to other people who will enjoy them. Are there whips you will not use? No. Uh, I won't use a whip that will really hurt anyone or cause injury. Uh, and But some people can take a lot. There's mm -hmm. good pain and there's bad pain. Uh, no, I, I once had to go to the hospital after a whipping. <clears throat> but it wasn't the whipping that sent me to the hospital. I got hives from the stress on my body. Oh, and it's I a see. wonderful story because I got to the hospital and I'm in the emergency room and this, this doc comes in who's maybe 30 and I'm, I'm 40. It's in the AIDS era. And... He looks at me, and I'm undressed, and he looks at my back and says, why do you do that to yourself? <coughs> and I looked at him and said, because it feels good and I like it. <laughs> and, he, and he said, you know, you're, you're harming your body severely. And if you continue 
doing uh, whippings like this. You, you, you will lose uh, uh, feeling in your muscles and you won't be able to feel anything. Well, I can tell you he was wrong.